Sports, and today's topic is sustainability. My name is Kayla Thomas. My guest today is Melanie Stewart, who's our sustain sustainability <laughs> manager for Nebraska Medicine and also UNMC. Yes, thanks for having me. You bet, we're happy to have you here. So sustainability is a word that we hear a lot, but I think a lot of people might not be familiar with exactly what that means and why it's so important. Uh, so sustainability kind of gets used in a lot of different ways, as you said, that it's uh, used kind of as sustaining yourself um, and sustaining a business. And while that is definitely true, um, the kind of accepted definition, if you will, is uh, not using resources in a way today that prevents us from using them in the future. And so that kind of gets tied in a lot of times with environmentalism. And while there is an environmental um, component, when uh, we're looking locally, it's still our local environment. So um, a lot of people think of environmentalism as saving the rainforest or mm -hmm. the polar bears or things like that, but we're really looking at uh, Omaha and Nebraska and the greater uh, Midwest region and things that are impacting us and our health and the things that we um, do on our daily uh, lives. And so all of those things matter now and they matter in the future. And this is an environmental topic, but it's also a medical topic, and we'll delve more into that in a second. So because of that, I do want to offer a reminder that anything contained in this chat is for informational purposes only. If you have any questions about your health or your medical condition, of course, direct those to your doctor. But questions are welcome here, and we're going to talk about what we do here at Nebraska Medicine and UNMC, but also some things that you can do at home, because this is the sort of thing where anyone can make an impact, and especially on a day like today when energy is such a big concern. Um, why is sustainability? so important to Nebraska Medicine and UNMC? So as you know, our mission is um, very health related and sustainability directly impacts your health. Um, whether it's the immediate things like today with having such a high heat index, we're gonna see more people having heat related illnesses. We'll see uh, emergency room visits tick up. Um, asthma related uh, or other lung ailment uh, issues will come uh, into play as well um, because the heat then affects that air quality that we're at a moderate level, which means that people who have asthma or COPD or bronchitis or things like that are going to struggle to breathe on days like today. Um, and so everything that we do here is tied back into health um, because that is what we do. Um, and while there are experts that are in those emergency rooms and we always have them available to take care of those patients, um, where a sustainability office comes in, um, we're not gonna treat any patients, but um, the best asthma attack to have is the one that you never have. Right. And so this is where we get into kind of preventative care, having a higher air quality, clean water to drink, uh, things like that, so um, that prevents those issues from ever coming into play. Well, and it impacts so many different areas of life. It's not just about keeping plastic out of the ocean, or right. it's not just about keeping waste out of the landfill. There are so many areas, and they all come back to health. Um, what are some of the biggest steps we've taken here and some of the biggest victories we've had? It. Go ahead and, and toot your horn a little <laughs> bit, Melanie. Uh, UNMC and Nebraska Medicine have done a great job um, in the past eight or nine years um, of really stepping up their sustainability game. Um, so we've been recycling uh, since the mid 80s, which again is fantastic. Uh, but as we've uh, really started to look at trends globally and locally, we created a sustainability master plan and we've updated uh, since the original plan was out to uh, include all of our goals to be a 2030 timeline. So as things are happening, we know that we need to do more faster. Uh, so we have committed to being net zero emissions, which would be uh, uh, using renewable energy um, on everything that we do on campus. So we're not putting any emissions into the atmosphere, which again goes back to that air quality. And we are only one of five uh, hospitals in the United States who have declared to do that in a 2030 or faster timeline. And we're the only one in the Midwest. So um, that's another high standard that we have have set there. And then we also have a uh, water reduction goal by 2030 um, and a net zero waste. Um, and we are one of the only hospitals that has committed to being net zero waste as well, that, uh, which is officially defined as 90% of everything that would leave this campus would be diverted from the landfill or incineration. So it would all be recycled or composted. And that's an ambitious goal as well, but we're working on it. 90% in case you missed that number. That is <laughs> amazing. It's a lot and um, healthcare in and of itself is a resource intensive uh, business, Absolutely. if you will, that, um, you know, where a lot of other businesses close down at night um, and turn things off, we are open 24 seven. Sure. Um, so we're always here, we're always caring for people, systems are always running, and so that we're using more energy, you're using more supplies, um, and that's just the nature of the beast, but um, that makes our impact even greater. 
if some people are here out in the community, if they're here as patients or they're here visiting patients or here for an event or whatever else, what are some of the things that they'll notice around here that show our sustainability practices? Uh, the most obvious and the things that people often look for um, are things like recycling bins mm -hmm. and we're working to infiltrate those into as many places we can so that it's convenient for people to use. Um, and then one of the, the biggest things that we've done lately that actually isn't that noticeable is we've just put uh, half a megawatt of solar panels on three different buildings. And so a lot of people get excited about that and we're excited about it too. Um, but they are sitting on a top of a building and so that actually helps us twofold. It shades the roof of that building which helps keep heat down but then it's also adding power. So. Shading the building, I think let's segue into heat, but since we're <laughs> since it's such a topic that's on everyone's minds today, anyone who works here, any employees, we get kind of a reminder of some of the things that we really should take the time to do to help conserve energy on a day like today. And these are things too that can help people, your air conditioner will run better, your houses be a little bit cooler. So what are some of those tips for those super hot days like today? Uh, the easiest thing to do is to close window coverings, whether it's blinds or curtains or uh, anything like that. Planting trees outside to give your house shade while that's not an immediate effect also helps as well. Um, but that's the first thing that providing that shade and not letting that heat in is the easiest way to go. Um, and then turning off lights, uh, turning off any electrical appliances that don't need to be used. Uh, pretty much everything that is plugged in is still using electricity even if it's not on. So if you can unplug those items. Um, and then here on campus we ask people to do everything from using a revolving door or taking the stairs instead of an elevator. Anything that you can do to use less energy um, and, and be more healthy is the way to go. I want to touch on something because I think a lot of people they might leave their phone. They, you know, unplug their phone from the charger, leave their charger plugged in all day. Turn off your curling iron, but leave it plugged in all day. Toaster, same thing. Yep. Does that really make a difference? Um, it really adds up. All of those things use uh, what's often called a vampire load. So it's just it, it literally sucking a little bit of energy out all the time. And when you look at everything that's plugged into your home, whether it's a cell phone charger, a microwave, um, you know, any VCR, DVD player, whatever, all of that stuff draws um, and it adds up in your home day after day, month over month, and it adds up on a campus of this size. And while we don't recommend people going unplugging major appliances, sure. things like cell phone chargers, um, toasters are really easy to do and will save you a little bit of energy. Right, save you some energy and save you some money too. Yep. It's your money. Um, while we're on the topic of that, things people can do at home. Let's take some of the lessons that we put into action here. Because a lot of people might think, oh, I'm one person. There's not that much that I can do to help the planet. But what are some things that people can do that are easy that you can make into a habit so you're just doing them every day? Um, and I would like to mention there's a lot of people that do believe that. It's just one action. It doesn't count. It's one pop can that doesn't get recycled. It's one light that doesn't get turned off. But people fail to recognize the additive effect um, that if you drink a can of pop every day, that's 365 cans in a year. That's a lot of pop cans that can be recycled. Um, and when you look at how many people do that across the board, the, the impact is great. Um, I know when we started saving electricity here and getting people to turn off the lights uh, and things like that, we calculated just what was being saved in those off hours. So conference rooms over lunchtime or at the end of the day, and we we're gonna save more than $150,000 just from those little things. And while we're a sizable campus, when you think of your house as being a component of a neighborhood or whatever, mm -hmm. um, those things really add up. So we always try to make sure that people know that while it may seem like a little action, it really isn't. Um, whether it's closing your curtains or turning down your thermostat a degree before you leave for work, recycling anything you can, um, really add up. I think we know about things like recycling, obviously, trying to do different things to save energy. If somebody wants to take things a step further and do a little bit more, okay, take your reusable bags to the grocery store, but what are some, I guess, kind of like intermediate steps to get your family a little bit greener? Um, there's a lot of good resources out there and, and again we're adding that effect whether it's something like a reusable cup instead of getting something disposable, your shopping bags. Um, a lot of people think recycling first and that is a good component. Um, we really like to push the reduce and reuse option first that um, recycling has its place, but not drinking out of that plastic bottle is the best way to go. So if you can uh, buy something in a container that can be reused, uh, whether you're purchasing out of a fountain or just drinking water, which is probably healthier for you anyway, um, that's the, the method we want would want people to take. And that's where recycling kind of becomes easy. And but buying a case of water bottles and recycling all those is not the, the best way for your budget, um, your health or the environment. So uh, 
I would also look at um, saving energy that a, a lot of people um, kind of pass over the energy aspect because it's not as tangible. Um, but when you start looking at these hot days and uh, your energy bill, those little steps really add up and that's a place where people could really stand to um, look at some different things in their house and what they could do differently. And once again, if you have any questions about anything that we have talked about today or anything that's a step above, you can go ahead and post those in the comment section, even if you're watching this, not live, but pre-recorded later. And we'll go back in. Melanie can answer those questions as well. Um, we wanna leave you with some ideas about some resources, some places where you can go um, if you're looking for for more information or want to take some more steps so what would you advise there um, keep Omaha beautiful actually has a great website um, to dispose of all kinds of different materials whether it's things that can be recycled things that go to the trash or even places like under the sink where you can take hazardous materials for free to dispose of them correctly uh, the Nebraska Recycling Council also has some really good information on that um, there's good resources, uh, I hate to say it, but just kind of in uh, Googling what specifically you want to do. So if you want to look at a programmable thermostat to help save energy at home, uh, we live in a state where there's public power, so uh, we're at an advantage there, so your public power supplier can help you with that. Um, and they're also great to advocate to, that um, if you want to see more renewables, uh, any you know, instead of putting solar panels on your house, if you'd like um, your energy company to be more renewable, they can use solar and you're still using that. So um, advocating with those officials is great as well. That's always good information, and it's good advice out there for anybody who thinks maybe that one thing that they're doing, like, oh, if I just do it this one time, like you mentioned, under the sink, oh, I'm just going to throw paint. If everyone had that attitude, we would be in big trouble. Absolutely. So there's little steps that all of us can take, some big steps that we're taking here when it comes to things like transportation, um, and she makes it easy. Melanie's actually <laughs> written stories for all of us here internally, teaching us all how to start composting. So if you're into those ideas, if you would like to pitch into the sustainability movement, it's something we're very dedicated to here at Nebraska Medicine and Absolutely. UNMC. So post any questions, look out for resources. Melanie will jump on and answer questions specifically related to sustainability. And especially on a day like today when we know what a big impact this heat is having, Absolutely. it's a good time to be thoughtful. Transportation is a, another huge area that it's, Omaha has always been the kind of 20 minute city. You jump in a car and you drive someplace and you can get there in 20 minutes and that's not really true anymore. And we're actually dealing with what they call a ground level ozone. So ozone up in the atmosphere is good. Ozone down at the ground level is bad. Um, it's hazardous to your health. It causes a lot of different problems. And Omaha is on the verge of being what they would call in uh, not in con, uh, in compliance with that number, mm -hmm. uh, which can lead to negative e economic impacts for our city. Um, so simple things like taking the bus or carpooling, saving a trip, um, riding your bicycle someplace. Again, it's one of those things that people don't think really has that impact, but again, added up, it really does. And we've seen some major impacts here because of your work and your team's work. So thank you so much for your time today. Thanks we for really having appreciate me. it. You bet. If you have any questions or want to look into more resources on our website, you can go to nebraskamed.com. Just search sustainability. And we will be back next week with another Moments in Medicine Live. Thanks for watching.